So let's put something inside of that and I'm going to say hello. And let's save that and let's refresh the page and you see that it tells me hello. And if you were to, in fact, go and inspect this, okay, you would just see the word hello. You notice that there's no like paragraph tag or anything like that around it. It's literally unformatted text that just says hello. Now, to, to be really clear what I was saying before, how Echo actually will print something to not just the screen, but to the actual browser. If I were to go here and um, let's just type some paragraph tags, for instance, right? And this is inside of a string. That means a string basically is any set of characters that are alphanumeric, right? Let's go one further and let's say that this is not a paragraph. Let's say that it's an H1 tag. Right, and then you're gonna see some default browser styling kick in here, right? See, it makes it bold and big, right? Because it's interpreting that as an H1 and because I don't have a style sheet, um, the browser styles are kicking in and automatically doing default styles here. Uh, but actually, let me jump back over here. Notably, the thing that is important is that you don't see those H1 tags here. So when I said it prints it to the browser, what I meant was that it prints it to the code view. And then whatever code is normally interpreted as part of the HTML, it shows up here. Okay. All right. So uh, let's look back over here. And I want to show you something else too is... Uh, Let's look at white space. Uh, so you know that in HTML, I could add all of this white space in between the actual tags. And as long as it's not inside of a tag, I could add them between the tags. And it, it doesn't make any difference at all. You should already know that from general HTML stuff, right? Well, some of that is sort of also true inside of PHP tags. So if I went in here and I did like this, you would, if I save it and I go over here and I hit refresh, you'll see that there's no change either in the display view or in the actual way that it's rendered in the code view. That doesn't matter, all right? But for instance, if I were to choose to put an extra space here after echo, let's see what happens there. Let's save that, come back over here and refresh. And you see that it's working now. The thing is, it, it wouldn't always do that with all installations of PHP. It might actually see those two spaces and think that there's a problem. If I added a bunch of space, let's save that, let's test it, and it's still rendering it out okay. Now, like I said before, that's not always going to be true. There might also be times when you put no space here and it might actually throw an error depending on what the installation of PHP is like on your server. So just be aware that some of the spacing in between actual commands and the um, argument that gets passed into the command, which in this case, the string is that argument, then uh, sometimes you'll have problems. If I were to add spaces inside of the string, right? If I wanted to say like this, right? Well, it's actually part of the string, but the thing is, is that the way that browsers interpret extra spaces is that they just remove them. So what would actually make sense is if I said, hello, um, my name is uh, Rudolph or something like that. Okay. We all know that I'm not really Rudolph. But if we say, hello, my name is Rudolph, you'll, you'll see that all of the spaces that are inside of the string actually do get interpreted because they're being seen as actual characters, right? And so you see that they're actually uh, pushed over here as well. The other thing too is that you'll find like if you want to tab stuff in, similarly to HTML, you'll, you, you'd be able to tab that in and that would be fine and it wouldn't be read. It wouldn't be a problem. And I want to show you an error that would happen uh, when you don't terminate something. So actually, let's first of all, let's look at how it's not gonna throw an error. So as a best practice, you always wanna terminate a command or it's also referred to as a statement. This is referred to as a statement um, where you're telling it to do something and then it's like putting a period at the end of a sentence kind of, right? So let's get rid of that terminator, which is a semicolon. And you're going to see that this is going to work, but it's not a best practice to leave it like this. Let me show you what's going to happen. If I save this, come back here and refresh, you see it's working just fine. No problem. Okay. I should have a terminator there though. And this is why, because if I get sloppy and I forget to write my terminator and I come down to the next line and decide, Hey, I also want to add something else. So let's say echo, and then we're going to append it with something. 
let's say we don't terminate it again even. So let's say that we echo out a paragraph tag, um, I don't know, that says, uh, what is yours? Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and save this. And let's and show me line 11 has an error. So let's go here, hit refresh. And it's telling me that there's a problem on line 11. And it tells me, let's look at the, the you know, meat of the syntax. It's saying it's a syntax error, first of all. And it's saying that it finds an unexpected echo basically on line 11. And it tells me what the file is. So it's telling me that it's specifically in this error-html.php file. And it tells me the exact location of that file. So let's look at line 11, and it tells me there's an unexpected echo here. Well, that's because it's wanting me on the previous line to terminate. All right, now let's save it. I still don't have line 11 terminated. Let's save it now. And, it, and it's loading it, and that's OK. This is still not right, though. This is still not a best practice. You should always terminate your stuff. And that's the reason why. All right, And a lot of times what you're going to see is in the middle of some HTML, and this is pretty normal, in the middle of some HTML, you're going to see a really quick echo that's only one echo and it doesn't have a terminator. It's not that it's wrong, it's just not a best practice. So if you get in the habit of terminating your stuff always, then you're going to be safe. Now the other thing that I could do is I could just have it like this, right, where I have one command issued immediately after the other on the same line. That's going to work just fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just hard to read. I could also have it where there's a space here, right? I can save that, refresh, and everything is still fine. Okay, so that's kind of the way that some of those spacing things go, and that's the way that your Terminator thing goes. Let's go ahead and do some more error testing. Let's see what happens if I come up here and I had forgotten to type my ending quotation mark. Well, there are a couple of things immediately that are obvious. Uh, you can see that the color coding for the rest of the page after that error, it's all thrown off. So that's my first clue. The second thing also is that it shows me on line 11 that there's a problem. Basically the way it works is that every once in a while, whenever it tells you that there's an error on a line, every once in a while the error is actually on the line that it says it's on. But a lot of times the error comes before the line that it says that there's an error, as in this case where it's not actually on line 11, the error is on line uh, 10 where I'm missing the ending quotation mark. But immediately Dreamweaver helps me by showing me that the color coding is all messed up because it doesn't know how to interpret all of this because my string uh, double quote is not ended. I have the beginning one but I don't have the ending one. And this is one of the reasons that in a lot of demos, what you're going to see me do is you're going to see me type the beginning and the end of something and then go back, put my cursor in the center and start typing it. Uh, so let's save this and see what kind of error it throws. Let's go up here, hit refresh. Again, it's giving me a parse error and it tells me it's a syntax problem. And it's saying that there's an unexpected close brace um, in this file on line 11. Okay, let's look at that. It thinks that this is where it's trying to end the string, right? Because it has an opening string quote and then it has a closed string quote. Well, it thinks that the error is actually on line 11 because it thinks maybe I should just terminate that, right? Okay, and then I would have a different kind of error. But it, it, it's like not exactly sure, but it's trying to help you the best it can, right? So if we come back here and we put the uh, closing quotation mark, save it, you'll know that it's okay, right? We test it and it's fixed. Now what happens if we don't open our quote properly, right? So we say echo, and then we, we intend to type this string here, but we don't put it in quotation marks. A string has to be uh, presented either in a double quote or in a single quote, and we'll get to this later, but you know, if you start with a double quote, you have to end it with a double quote. If you start with a single quote, you have to end it with a single quote. And I'll get later to what the differences are between double and single quotes. Not in this demo, but anyway, I have to have some sort of quote here. Otherwise, what it's going to do is it's going to see this and not know what to do with it. So let's save this, and let's just see how it presents the error now. Okay, again, parse error syntax, and it's saying that it, it finds an unexpected open bracket on line 10. Okay, well, it, it is actually on line 10. The other thing I could do here, let's just say that we get rid of the H1. And let's just, in fact, let's get rid of all of this stuff. 
and we'll get rid of those H1 tags. Okay, and let's hit save so that we don't have any kind of formatting around HTML formatting around our stuff. Okay, now it's saying something different. It's not saying that there's an unexpected uh, open brace, right? What it's saying now is that there's unexpected name. And what that thinks that it's doing, right, where it's saying hello, right? It's thinking it's a name, meaning that it's a constant name. We haven't talked anything at all about constants, but if you were to say something like echo hello without having it be represented as a variable or anything like that, it would think that it's some sort of constant, which is a different form of a variable. So anyway, but it is telling you the correct information that it's on line 10. It's because I don't have my quotation marks. You're going to find that a huge number of your errors are going to be about forgetting to uh, put open or closed quotation marks or Another thing that you might find is like if we do that PHP info thing again, for instance, let's say that we forgot to close the last uh, parenthesis. We forgot to close our parenthesis. Let's just do that and save it and see what happens. You hit refresh and it gives me some other problem. It says unexpected semicolon because it's expecting it to close the uh, function, right? So, all right. Um, now, we can also do something like, let's just get rid of this completely, all right, where we have no quotation, ending quotation mark, and no terminator, and let's save that, and let's see what kind of thing we get. All right, now this is something totally different, where it's saying, it's, but it's still a syntax error, it's saying unexpected end of file, expecting a variable, blah, 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 and it tells me all this stuff. And it says it's line, on line 14. Well, if you look at line 14, line 14 is the very end of the document. It's actually after the HTML. If I get rid of that and I hit save, so that it's going to show up now as line 13. See? What it's doing is it literally gets to the very end of the document because it's trying to close the quotation mark. It's waiting for all of this information to be done, right? And if I were to put a quotation mark right there, like that, then you know, it, it's it's confused because it's skipping over this because it thinks that it, it's actually part of my string. It's skipping over this and it's thinking that's part of my string. It gets to the very end and it's saying, hey, you didn't close my quotation mark. I'm at the end of the file. Sometimes what you'll see here um, in different PHP installations is you'll see a dollar symbol with the word end. That's the same thing as end of file. Also sometimes in all caps you'll see EOF, which also means end of file. And that always, always, always means that there is something that was opened that wasn't closed. If you get to the end of the file and it's saying, hey, I was expecting to see something, and I didn't see it, it's because you opened something and you didn't close it, okay? So let's go ahead and come back here. And like, you don't have to remember all of this stuff that I'm telling you right now. You don't have to memorize all of these errors and things. But what I'm trying to do is show you how you can actually start to dissect these so that you can try your best to figure out what exactly is wrong with the syntax. And furthermore, don't be terrified of this. It's just it's just a message. You know, if you feel like you've tried your hardest to figure it out, please feel free to put your work up on the server in your um, student directory. And then you can post something to the discussion board or send me an email or something and tell me what the problem is. Send me uh, also uh, the URL for where the problem is and please make sure it's not just on localhost, right? Because just remember that I can't see stuff that's on your own computer behind your firewall. You have to put it up on the class server, which is in the cloud, and, you know, it has all these special firewall exceptions and routers exceptions and stuff like that so that the world can see it. And uh, just let me know what the problem is, and I'll, I can take a look at it. But if this is all I see... You know, if this is the only information that you give me and I can't actually go to the class server and look at the original source code, I can only take a wild guess at what the problem is, but I won't know for sure without looking at your actual file. Okay, um, so that's a good introduction to error messages, and um, you can always come back and look at this later. Just don't be scared of these things. Just try your best to figure them out, and then ask for help if you need it.